Hey everyone, hope you all are having a fantastic week. I wanted to record this short video here to highlight what I think is one of the more interesting bits of LLM news that was announced this week. It's by this team called Nose Research. And they're introducing the Forge Reasoning API in Beta, an evolution in LLM inference. Why I wanted to do this video is because I want to have a little discussion around Reasoning APIs. I think Reasoning APIs are going to be huge going into next year especially as we develop more sophisticated systems with LLMs, such as agentic workflows and even agentic rag systems, which a lot of people are interested in these days. So I wanted to discuss a bit, offer some thoughts around this, and where things might actually be headed. So the news chat, I'm gonna skip this one. This is just a nice chat interface. I'm gonna skip over to the Verge Reasoning API, which they claim allows you to take any popular model and superpower it with a code interpreter and advanced reasoning capabilities. There are a few capabilities that are quite important for building agentic workflows. These are two capabilities which we discuss a lot in our AI agents course. So I have a course on that that I recently developed. If you're interested in that, I'll leave a link in the description. But basically allowing a model to use external tools to pull in information when it needs to, a lot of real world tasks require that. And also advanced reasoning capabilities, which is where a lot of companies such as OpenAI and Cloud are focusing a lot of efforts on. This is why now we're seeing specific language models trained to do reasoning. And that's because we want to be able to use these LLMs that can reason about large amounts of data. And they have done some evaluation here and they show that this Hermes 70B can be competitive with much larger models such as Gemini Pro 1.5, the anthropic models on the 3.5 and GPT-4 on these reasoning benchmarks. So these are the popular ones. And so the big question is, where are these improvements coming from? Apparently, they do improve a lot of the results. And you can see they're very competitive with some of these models. And in some cases, even outperforming these very good and capable models. So you can see here for this AMI evaluation, which is about competition grade math questions, you see how this model actually performs with the Forge Reasoning API. That's very powerful. How are they doing this? So let's go over some of the details that they are sharing. And what I like about this announcement is that not only are they showing how good they can perform on the benchmark, but they also emphasize the importance of applying such technology in real world use cases, which I think everyone is interested in. The interesting question here that I want to pose and something that I'm actually writing and developing educational content on is how can you leverage reasoning for real world tasks? Where might you apply some of these reasoning capabilities, specifically the reasoning capabilities they are talking about, mixture of agents, which combines different agents and forms consensus before sending out an output and then chain of code, which is this idea of using code together with chain of thought. And then Monte Carlo tree search, which is another idea to enhance the reasoning capabilities of these LLMs. How might we be able to use some of these techniques? That's the big question here. They are offering different choices. Right? So you can use different models and you can use different techniques. And we're going to see a lot of these different techniques. Right, These are just three that I mentioned here, but there could be more as well. And there's a lot of research happening here. And this is why I would say it's a good idea to release this in beta because there's not a lot of information about how to leverage these techniques, where they might apply, which are the tasks that you're going to apply them on. There's a lot of considerations such as latency, cost, and these different things. But I think it's still an interesting development, especially that these things are now offered via an API. So if you're using the O1 preview models or the O1 series of models from OpenAI, you don't get to choose what component to use. You just have access to the APIs and these models and you have to use them out of the box. But I think as developers, what we want is something that's more flexible, customizable, and configurable as well. Similar to being able to configure the language model itself, I think it's useful to be able to configure how it's doing the reasoning and what are the components that it's gonna use to do the reasoning. Because I think that will depend on the type of task that you're working on, on the requirements, if you want faster generation, for some domains you will need that. 
So I think that's an interesting conversation to have. And that's something that I'm doing a lot of research around. So these are the what they propose to be the reasoning layer. So chain of code, Monte Carlo tree search, mixture of agents. And then there is the model layer, obviously, right here. This encompasses the Forge Reasoning API. And so they mention a little bit about the different techniques. We know that this one is especially useful for planning. So if you're working in areas where the agents needs to plan, for instance, if you're building very complex agents or multi-agents, there's a lot of planning involved. There's always a planning component to these agents. I know this because I am actually working with some companies developing these things, and it's not so easy to get these models to develop really good plans for solving tasks, especially when these are real-world tasks where data is really messy and it's really hard to actually get the right data for the model. So that's the important question, right? When to use these components or a combination of these components as well, again, depending on the requirements. So MCTS is good for planning. There's also chain of code, which is more about the code interpreter. This is useful for when you're doing like analysis, uh, financial analysis, for instance, where you might need some math capabilities, you may need some analysis, generate code, generate charts and things like that, where you use some kind of code interpreter, then this one would be useful for that. And then there is like mixture of agents, which is an idea also that we're exploring a bit as well, where you can combine the responses from a combination of agents, because maybe one agent only has or can only see part of the picture. And so building this consensus between different LLMs can give you a much more improved answer. And that's the idea. And this is now served via an API. There are different ways how you can use mixture of agents. It's a very simple concept, but I like that they are offering this via the API. And as you can imagine, all of these components are probably very, very, very intensive in terms of latency and obviously probably really costly as well. Very expensive in how much tokens are used and so forth and how much iterations need to happen. Something that they mention here about iterations though, it's a single turn capability, which means for instance, if you want to do something like self-reflection, which I think should be one of the components here that we're finding a lot of success with our own agents. Now, how do you enable that here? as well. Or maybe self-reflection could be as part of one of these or could be something entirely different. This is why I'm excited about this space because the reasoning layer you know, keeps growing and there are different approaches and newer approaches that are emerging that will be part of this particular reasoning layer. And finally here, we have an example. So they gave you an example. By the way, if you want access to it, you probably have to apply for it, but you know, only a small group of users, just keep that in mind. I don't have access to it. I am trying to get access to this. If there's someone from this research team, please let me know. I would love to do an extended video on this. This is something I'm doing a lot of heavy research on. So here we see some outputs with this prompt given. So role play as a necromancer bargaining with the eldritch god of knowledge, a god who craves a few things he does not know. Present your bartering plan in the tone and style of the necromancer on god respectively. And here is the O1 preview output very standard output that we get from O1. And then we have the forge output. Now, I find this really interesting because one thing you can obviously see here is that the fact that it can adapt and can do the role play and adapt the chains and adapt the different thinking steps that it needs to be able to come up with a response. It's kind of interesting, I think, and that's something that will be useful. This is why I was saying for different domains, you may require the model to be able to do the proper role-playing to be able to make good decisions, right? Even the planning might look very different for different problems in different domains. So for finance, it might look completely different than it looks for health-related tasks. And so I think that will be interesting to have something that can adopt or could have a reasoning API that can adopt to the different domains. I believe that O1 Preview, probably you can get it to behave like that if you try a little bit of like prompt engineering right? And that's something that I am experimenting with. But I think that's an important capability. And it seems that this Forge API, reasoning API, has the ability to do that. No, I haven't used it, so I cannot say how robust this is. But I think that's a very useful feature and capability, especially as you work on different problems for different domains. And this is going to be super important for agentic workflows, because in agentic workflows, what you do is you build specialized agents, especially for multi-agent systems. You build the specialized agents. They usually have a specific task that they're doing, and they take on a specific role. If we can use an API out of the box that can adopt based on how we are prompting with the agent, that'll be nice. And that'll 
be super useful to have. Again, not sure how robust this is, but I think this is super promising from what I can see in this example. That'll be it for this update. Hopefully there is something here for you. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I am doing a lot of research around this. Obviously love doing research around reasoning and LLMs. That's the space that I'm very much involved in these days. But I also work on developing like these agentic systems, these very complex RAG systems as well. So do let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any thoughts about this release. That'll be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider leaving a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I will see you all in the next one.